I'm having an absolutely excellent day. I hope all of you are as well. We, yeah, right, yeah. Today we appropriately honor Leonard Nimoy, but I want to kick it up a notch to Gene Roddenberry. Gene Roddenberry created the character that Leonard Nimoy immortalized, and from there we have the entire Star Trek universe that led to all kinds of things that we understand as connection, as understanding. And what we've done now is establish something that helps in connection, and I'm going to start talking now about Ebola. I know, a bit of a shift, but work with me here. So, Ebola is a tragedy, there's absolutely no doubt about it, but we're a learning civilization. We are a group that tries to make the next disaster, the next catastrophe, a little less noteworthy than the one before. So let's talk about that a bit. This is how it all started, because I'm going to take you into the abyss, and then I hope bring you back out a little bit. We'll see how well I succeed. A one-year-old boy, the index case in December of 2013, his mother died, his sister died, his grandmother died, and many more people died before this was identified as Ebola because Ebola had never been seen within a thousand miles of this index case, this little boy. It was March before we nailed it, and after that we found that it was severe enough to be called a public health emergency of international concern, only the third one we had ever identified. By that time, there were 2,000 dead, um, and out of that had come a great deal of information, and we're going to talk a little bit about what's happened since then. This is as of about 10 days ago. 23,000 infected, 9,000 dead, and I looked at the numbers last night, it's actually getting very close to 10,000 dead. But the numbers down below really matter because that is actually a very large fraction of the entire subset that is healthcare workers in West Africa. That's going to have long-term repercussions, and so will many other things. So when the airlines stopped flying, we stopped being able to get people easily back and forth into the infected area. That has resulted in a reduction in capacity, and from that has come a redirection of what healthcare activities there were into a focus on Ebola. On the 15th of February, 17 people presented with fever of unknown origin to the main hospital in Monrovia. Of those, two, two had Ebola. They were admitted. The other 15 were sent home. That, of course, didn't used to happen because those other 15 may well have had malaria, dengue, typhoid, something else that is actually life-threatening but cannot be accommodated inside a disintegrating healthcare system inside West Africa. Education, the schools closed. Basically, an entire year has been lost in West African education at every level. It's only beginning to restart now because the Ebola crisis is waning because public health works. The agriculture has taken a severe hit. Um, at the moment, it looks like about 40% of all of the agriculture in the affected areas has now lain fallow or allowed the crops to rot in the field because the people who were there have gone elsewhere in fear or in treatment. That has resulted in an estimation from the World Food Program that up to one million people in West Africa may be food insecure, you heard that term earlier today, by mm, this month, by March. So, Income has dropped because, of course, the market's closed, right? All the contact between people has been minimized. Schools closed, markets closed, mines closed. Mines are a dominant part of an employment. Uh, that sector is not going to reopen for a while, so incomes have dropped. And on the 15th of February, a discussion came out in Public Library of Science, PLOS, uh, published across the Bay, that showed that the life expectancy in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea looks like it has dropped back to about where it was at the end of the Civil War in West Africa a decade ago. Huge impact from an infectious disease outbreak. But now that I've taken you down there, we've actually learned a very great deal. And what I want to emphasize is that smart, well-trained, competent, passionate people have been intensely interested in helping in this crisis all over the world since almost its inception, since we recognized what we had underway. 
we have just on this list of six that you see here, a new surface disinfectant that is far less toxic than bleach, yet a hundred times more effective. And we have great independent laboratory evidence for that. It's called HOCl, hydrogen oxide and chlorine, in a very unusual process that has been trademarked, but also made freely available. We have an effort called Hua Dao, Hua, China, um, Dao, the way, as in Dao De Ching, the way of things. The Hua Dao initiative is a pandemic resilient eco city being built in the south of China that will be shared freely as a model throughout China and throughout the rest of the world. I can tell you more about that sometime if you like. UNWHO, the World Health Organization, has altered the way, they do, the, the way that they do business in a way that may result in structural changes, has moved diagnostics and therapeutics and vaccines into a very rapid protocol that they hadn't had before, and it has allowed itself to go back to the donor nations, come back with a renewed emphasis on infectious diseases, where the donor nations, who of course run the United Nations, had asked for chronic diseases, cardiovascular diseases, pulmonary diseases, cancer, to become the focus. We are now looking a little more carefully back at infectious diseases. We've also learned, and I'm going to go a little bit more depth in those last three that I showed you, BATS, PPE, and viral transformation, who the culprits might be. Um, if you look at the middle guy, and by the way, you'll notice that they're not defying gravity. I had to turn the photographs upside down. These are BATS. Um, the, so the middle guy with the red dot down in the middle, Torcada, um, take a look at his range. The hash marks where the little red dot is, we have all the way out into this new area. We hadn't expected that. So let's recognize we know more about how it got there than we did before. This is a woman who volunteered at the White House to do her PPE, full immersion, Ebola-like protection, and speak about the inventions that she wanted to bring out. From that came a meeting, a hackathon, to put new PPE together. From there, we got actually some outstanding women one is Dr. Mei Chu, who is the president's advisor on special emerging infections. The other is Megan Smith, the chief information officer of the United States. Note that they are both women. You're going to see that theme over the next few seconds. This woman is an outstanding scientist, Erica Sapphire. She published this in Cell. She's been studying Ebola for about 11 years, and she's gifted us with some video that I'm going to make very quickly um, available to you for the first time publicly. The Ebola turns out to be a transformer. If you look at that pink layer, that's VP40, that is the matrix protein, it turns out that it changes shape. Ebola is a thread-like virus, a filovirus, and it has very little RNA, but it does have many, many functions, more than we might have expected, and it turns out that flexibility in that matrix protein might be one reason we see that. It changes shape. This is new. Here's one shape, here's a second shape, here's a third shape. We've not seen this before, and we've never known to look. This is how the subunits of that matrix protein come together, and this is the first time this video has been seen in public, our thanks to Professor Sapphire. This is how it makes new copies, and this is how it takes those new copies and moves it out of the cell. So, used to be we thought once you had a sequence, you had protein uh, development that led to an electrodynamic folding, that folding determined function. Actually here, we see that you have a protein that has three different folds, three different functions, and there's no error, there's no post-transcriptional modification. This isn't something that is a mistake. It's been looked at very carefully. So we have these three shapes. We never knew that we should look for this extra layer of complexity, and we recognize that this may be elsewhere we hadn't known. Is this a part of cancer? Is this other viruses? Is this one of the reasons for antibacterial resistance? We hadn't known to look. We now know to look. I'll stop there, yeah. Erica Sapphire. Erica Sapphire. So, I'll stop here. All of the disaster that is Ebola is going to happen in some fashion again. 
We need to have people. This is a fantastic educational institution. All of you are very excited people. You're passionate people. Go get trained. Keep your passion through your training. Trust me, that's hard. Keep your passion through your training and come join us in the fight. There's a lot to do. Thanks.